the rolling hills and green pastures of New York's Unadilla Valley is home to what many call the finest motocross track in the country. It's used only once a year for the U.S. 250 Grand Prix. Since the 1984 event, not a wheel has turned on this peaceful setting. But it's Grand Prix time again. The lush Unadilla Valley pasture land is ready for the most exciting motocross action anywhere. Hello everyone, I'm Larry Myers and welcome to New Berlin, New York. It's the U.S. round of the 250cc World Championship Grand Prix Motocross. Since 1978 at this Unadilla track, the action has gotten better and better. This year should be no exception. With me to report from the pits, Tim Cotter. Larry, this is my fifth year at the United States Grand Prix here at Unadilla, and I feel this is the toughest competition we've had in recent years. I'll be in the pit area and also at trackside throughout the day to keep you up to date on all the excitement as it occurs. Back to you, Larry. Let's take a look at some of the top riders that will be competing here at Unadilla today. The most famous motocrosser in the world today is Honda's Bob Hurricane Hanna. He's won everything in sight, except Unadilla. He wants this one bad and has predicted a win. Hanna's teammate, the Osho, Johnny O'Mara. In prior years, O'Mara has won a pair of 125 Grand Prix, a national championship, and the 1984 Supercross crown. He's tough on any terrain. Jeff Ward of Team Kawasaki is putting together the kind of season that dreams are made of. The 1984-125 national champion is the points leader in two national classes and has easily been the most consistent rider of the year. Ward's teammate is Mark the Bomber Barnett. The former national and supercross champion was the fastest rider at Unadilla in 1984. He won the first moto, then fell victim to mechanical problems. Number 24, Team Yamaha's Keith Bowen, is rapidly turning into one of the fastest riders in the country. His wide open style lends itself to this rough Unadilla track. Bowen is on the verge of making it big, and Unadilla could be his stepping stone. Also on a Yamaha is the U.S. 250 champion, Rick Call Me Magic Johnson. No one lets it hang out any further than Johnson. Whatever it takes, the Magic Man will do it to win. From Europe comes the 1984 250 world champion, Austrian Heinz Kindergartner. Riding a KTM, Kindergartner knows what it takes to win and has proven his ability to do it. The points leader going into Unadilla is Yamaha mounted Jackie Vimone. The young French rider is enjoying a spectacular season. A Unadilla win would be frosting on the cake. Despite optimism shown by European riders, the chances of one of them winning are extremely slim. Since the first U.S. 250 Grand Prix held in 1978, there have been five American winners and only two winners from Europe. Since Keith Van Der Ven's win in 1982, no European has ever come close to winning at Unadilla. In 1983, the Europeans showed up in force, but it was an American, Team Honda's David Bailey, who stole the show. The Virginia rider won the overall title with moto finishes of first and second. Dan Laporte followed Bailey home with another American, Brian Myerskoff, providing Unadilla fans with an American sweep of the first three places. It was a happy Bailey in the Unadilla winner's circle. The Europeans would have to wait until next year. In 1984, the Europeans again showed up in force, but again their efforts fell short. The Europeans had to take a backseat to their American rivals. Leading the way for the Americans was Unadilla's adopted son, number 33, Bob Hurricane Hanna. Hanna and his Honda teammate, number 34, Ron Lachine, provided Unadilla fans with a first-rate battle. But in the end, it was Suzuki-mounted Mark Barnett across the finish line, first in moto number one. In moto number two, Mark Barnett again stormed to the front and appeared to have victory well in hand. Then, mechanical problems set in and opened the door for Ron Lachine, who won the moto and took the overall victory. Lachine was followed by Hannah and Barnett. For the second straight year, Americans swept the top three places. Tim Cotter is standing by in the staging area. Larry, we're just moments away from the start of moto number one. The riders are in the staging area and on their way to the starting line. The fastest qualifier today was the current world champion, Heinz Kindergartner from Austria in a KTM mounted. Heinz, are you surprised that you qualified faster than the Americans? Uh, uh, I like it, but uh, it's only one lap and we must go 45 minutes now. Do you think you can beat the Americans on their, their home soil? I don't know. I hope so. 
Heinz Kindergartner, a KTM rider from Austria, our second fastest qualifier. However, it was no surprise. Jeff Ward, a Kawasaki mounted. Jeff, you've had some good laps in practice. How do you think you're going to fare today? Oh, I do really well. I'm just trying. I wasn't riding the fastest I could ride out there. And practice usually isn't my fastest time. So I'm looking forward to putting some better laps together during the race. Jeff, there's a legend at Unadilla and the fans and their craziness. Does that do anything for you on the racetrack? Oh, it definitely inspires you. They're screaming, you know, when you're up front. Uh, it's not going to do me any good when I'm in the back, but they still scream for you back there, too, so it's good spectators here. Larry, the riders are ready to go to the starting line, and we're ready for the start of this 1985 USGP at Unadilla. There's Bob Hanna on the starting line. The Hurricane and 37 of the best motocrossers in the world are about to challenge this tough, demanding Unadilla track, a track that many call the best in the world. Unlike most motocross tracks, Unadilla is built 100% over natural terrain, and that's the key to its greatness. There are steep hills, jumps, and a soil base that builds berms and forms whoops over three foot high. It's unforgiving to riders and a spectator's delight. The gate is about to drop, and moto number one is underway. 37 of the best riders in the world are sweeping through corner number one. Grabbing the hole shot, it's Honda Mounted Privateer Tom Carson from Hopedale, Ohio. In second place, it's Yamaha's Rick Johnson from El Cajon, California. And following Johnson is Frenchman Jackie Bimon. Bimon is the current Grand Prix Series points leader. And then comes the defending world champion, Heinz Kindergarten from Austria on a KTM. The battle among the front runners is for second place. Jackie Bimon moves even with Johnson. And the leaders get ready to dive in the gravity cavity near end. Johnson and Bimon side by side out of the cavity. Johnson lands first, gets the drive, and he'll hold on to second place. The front runners have made that hairpin turn and they're heading toward the mechanic signal area. Carson, the privateer, is feeling the pressure from the factory riders behind him. Rick Johnson, rider number 18, is like a cat. He's stalking his prey, watching every move the Honda privateer makes. One mistake by Carson and Johnson will pounce and make the pass. But so far, Carson has made no mistakes. The privateer from Hopedale, Ohio, has handled the pressure and handled it well. Now Johnson on Carson's rear wheel and he makes the pass. Johnson swung wide and went by Carson and Johnson is the new leader. What Johnson would like now is for Carson to hold on to second while he builds a lead on the rest of the field. If Carson cooperates, then Johnson would be home free. The running order is Johnson, Carson, Damone, Keith Bowen, Jeff Ward, Van Doren, Keller, and Hannah running in eight. The riders now looking for traction on one of the toughest parts of this racetrack. Carson running about 25 yards behind your leader, while Bamone moving up to challenge Carson for that runner-up position. But the story out in front is Rick Johnson. He's all alone out in front. Johnson with a track wired is opening a huge lead on the rest of the field. He's pushing just as hard as he can to increase it. He's not worried about Carson, but he is concerned about Bamone, Ward, Hannah, Kindergartner, and O'Mara. Those riders are still behind Carson, but they're pulling every move in the book to pass him. They, too, are aware of the widening gap between first and second. Behind the front runners, the field has already started to stretch out. Now Bamone is making his bid. He's going to try for second. He goes by Carson. Bamone has moved into the number two position. Going into Unadilla, Jackie Bamone, the Frenchman, held a 35-point lead over current champion Kindergartner. It looks like he has every intention of increasing that lead. The front runners are by the finish line, and lap number one is in the book. The running order is Johnson in first, followed by Jackie Bimone. Carson holds on to third with Bowen in fourth. Jeff Ward is fifth, Keller sixth, Van Dorn seventh, O'Mara eighth, Hannah ninth, and rounding out the top ten is the KTM-mounted world champion, Heinz Kindergarten. Out of gravity cavity, and look at the air these riders are getting. There's enough room under them to park a truck, and look, a rider goes down. It's the world champion, Heinz Kindergarten. Kindergartner is up, he's trying to get his bike started, but that spill will cost him championship points. Meanwhile, Johnson out in front continues to charge. I've never been one to sit back and take second. Uh, as I proved that two years ago when I lost the championship because I made a stupid mistake and I tried to go out and win the last race when all I had to do was get a fifth. But um, I want to be remembered as uh, being sort of a, you might say, a go for it kind of person and give 110% the whole time. How bad would you like to win Unadilla? Real bad. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Bowen has moved into second, and Jeff Ward screams to the inside and passes Bamone for third. 
Jeff Ward, number 22, has come from out of the pack, and he's on the gas. Ward is in line to win the U.S. 250 National Crown, and a victory here at the 250 U.S. Grand Prix would be frosting on the cake. The race is barely underway, but already the field behind the front runners is starting to stretch out. Your leader, Rick Johnson, number 18, diving into gravity cavity, has a huge lead on rider number 24, Pete Bowen, in second. Then comes Ward, Bamone, Keller, and O'Mara. Running behind that group in the number six position, Bob Hurricane Hanna. Here's your leader, Rick Johnson, from El Cajon, California. He was the 1984 250 national champion and should have been the champion 82. Going into the final race of the year, Johnson had the points lead. All he had to do was put in a conservative ride and the championship was his. Instead, he went for the win. He tried to pass Donnie Hansen off a big jump and landed wrong. He broke the front wheel of his Yamaha and that was the race. Hansen ended up winning the race and the championship and Johnson settled for third. Look at this battle for second. Bowen is in second with Ward third, Keller is fourth, Bamone fifth, Hannah sixth, and O'Mara is seventh. Rick Johnson now with a seven second lead Hold on, I've just received word that Jeff Ward has fallen. There's Bowen, Keller is in third, Hannah fourth, O'Mara fifth, and Bamone sixth, no Jeff Ward. There he is, he's coming out of gravity cavity. Ward is running with Kindergartner in 12th place. Kindergartner went down earlier and has been playing catch up ever since, and now it's Ward's turn. Johnson still out in front and still alone. He's mastered this tough Unadilla track today, and it's beginning to look like he won't be caught. In second place, it's another Yamaha. This one belongs to Keith Bowen, number 24. But company is coming. Honda Rider, Bob Hanna, and JoJo Keller are running third and fourth, but they're gaining. In the early going, Hanna appeared to be dogging it. He had a decent hole shot, but was going nowhere. But now Hanna is coming on strong. If he's going to be a factor, he'll have to get by Bowen and at the same time hold off Keller and O'Mara and the charging pack behind him. The Honda riders, Hanna, Keller, and O'Mara are pushing each other closer and closer to Bowen in second and Johnson in first. Hanna is the key to that trio. He's pulling away from Keller and O'Mara slightly. They need to pick up their pace if they're going to stay with him. Johnson, all alone in front, could be at a disadvantage. He has no one to push him or race with him. Behind him, that Honda Horde, Hannah, Keller, and O'Mara continue to race each other, charge, and continue to close. Now Hannah draws to the rear wheel of Bowen. He gets sideways, almost goes down. Johnny O'Mara will take advantage of Hannah's miscue, and he'll move into the number three position. Let's check and see if that momentum is going to slow that Honda Horde down. It's Johnson out of gravity cavity. He still has a big lead, but the battle behind him is still getting closer. O'Mara, the Osho, is now challenging Bowen for second. Into a right-hand sweeper with O'Mara on the outside, and O'Mara takes over the number two position. The Osho, from out of the pack, has moved into second. He has no intentions of stopping there. O'Mara is no stranger to the pressures of running in Grand Prix. In fact, he's won two of them. The U.S. 125 Grand Prix in 1981 and the Swiss 125 Grand Prix in 1982. So the order, out in front, is Rick Johnson, he's followed by O'Mara, Bowen, Hannah in fourth, and then Keller. That pack of riders behind Johnson has definitely closed down the leader. Johnson has had the lead since the opening lap and has yet to be challenged. But you get the feeling that situation is about to change. The leaders are working their way through the lowest part of this Unadilla track. And now Johnson going into the roughest piece of real estate in New York. The whoops are three foot deep and seem to change every time around. Johnson went to the inside, O'Mara to the outside. That uphill section is wide open, grit your teeth and hang on. Honda's Johnny O'Mara running in second with Bowen. Hannah and Keller right behind him has cut another full second off Johnson's lead. If they continue to close at that rate, they'll be on Johnson's rear wheel in less than five laps. Two Yamahas, two Hondas, and four of the best riders in the country are making a shambles of that talented field behind them. The pace they have set is incredible. You have to wonder if they'll be able to keep it up. Behind the Americans, Frenchman Jackie Bamone is running sixth. He's leading the European contingent. Number six, Dutchman Van Doren is the second European and is running ninth. Third European is Kindergartner in 11th with Jeff Ward running 12th. Both Ward and Kindergartner were victims of crashes in the early laps and have not been able to catch up. But the story in moto number one is twofold. 
El Cajon, California's Rick Johnson is in first, and the charging pack behind him. They've whittled another full second off Johnson's lead. It's down now to just five seconds, and that charging pack is riding as hard as they can to close it even more. There's Johnson through the mechanics area. We're looking now for O'Mara. He should be, and there he is, O'Mara running second. Now Hannah has passed Bowen for third, but Bowen is hanging tough on Hannah's rear wheel. Hannah and Bowen were involved in a couple of incidents last year, and they're not the best of friends. As a result of one of those incidents, Hannah ended up with a broken wrist, and it happens again. Bowen ran it under Hannah and tried to use Hannah's leg for a burn. What a race! Bowen, with about a mile of banners wound up in his rear wheel, runs desperately to repass Hannah. Hannah has got to be thinking of that broken wrist and staying out of Bowen's way. Now Bowen, with an inside line, draws even. He makes the pass. Keith Bowen, Team Yamaha, has moved back into third, and Hannah goes to fourth. Shadowing Bowen, Hannah will keep as much pressure on him as he can. The Honda star would like nothing better than to force a Bowen mistake. Side by side. And Bowen takes Hannah to the wall. Hannah and Bowen are having an all-out war. I don't think either one of them cares about O'Mara or Johnson. This is a private shootout, and that's all that matters. Bowen now with a two-bike length lead over Hannah. Hannah goes to the outside. Bowen wants to keep him there. They're going now into that rough uphill. Hannah outside. Side by side, the two riders are charging. What a race this Unadilla Grand Prix has turned out to be. Keith Bowen in third and trying to hang on. Team Honda's Hurricane Hannah is fourth. He's trying to pass. Here they come, Bowen on the inside and Hannah goes wide. He's got the drive and he passes. Hannah moves back into third. The question is, will Bowen let him keep it? Back with our leaders, and now O'Mara takes an inside line and he makes the pass. Right behind him comes Hannah and Bowen. It's a four-rider race for the number one position. Johnson, the leader since lap number one, is now in second and chasing the Honda of Johnny O'Mara. This Unadilla track has seen great races over the years, but none better than this one we're watching now. Four riders, O'Mara, Johnson, Hannah, and Bowen, letting it all hang out. They're using every inch of the track. Going into gravity cavity, and Hannah is giving Johnson fits. One bobble on the part of the Yamaha star, and Hannah will pass and move into second. Out of the cavity. They're side by side, and Hannah makes the pass. No! Johnson cutting back to the inside of Hannah, held on a second. What a move by Johnson. To the mechanic single area, O'Mara holding the lead in front. Here's Johnson, and Johnson goes down. Hannah moves to second, and a lap rider goes by. But where's Bowen? He was right behind Hannah, but I don't see him. Johnson is up. He's trying to get going again, but that mistake was a costly one. It appears that Rick Johnson is another victim of this tough Unadilla track. Tim Connor has found Keith Bowen and is with him. In the infield, and we're talking to Keith Bowen. Keith, you were running an excellent ride. What happened out there? Well, I was running. I had a good start, and I was running fourth, and uh, I got some banners caught in my rear wheel, and I don't know if that slowed the motor down or not, but eventually seized. You know, it started slowing down about a lap before it seized, and uh, then the motor just locked up. Some tough luck here in motor number one. I'm sure we'll see you in motor number two, but it takes the flavor out of it as you knock you out of the championship. Yeah, but I'll just try and win the next moto and do the best I can. That's all I can do. Keith, I'm sure you'll do a good job. So we're in the infield. We're going back to Larry Myers. A tough break for Bowen and another Unadilla track victim. Here comes O'Mara with Hannah just one second behind him. It looks at this point like a two-rider battle to the finish. The Honda camp has to be happy, but you can bet they're also nervous. Hannah and O'Mara are both go-for-it riders. Teammates or not, they both want to win, and they'll ride each other into the ground to do it. And I'm sure that Team Honda does not want that. O'Mara, down in the bottom, forced to the racetrack, and here comes Hannah alongside O'Mara. Hannah, with feet off the pegs, goes by. An unbelievable pass. Hannah has the lead, and now it's O'Mara's turn to play catch-up. And O'Mara is coming right back. Into the corner and out, Hannah with a drive. O'Mara, though, refuses to back off. Hannah goes wide. O'Mara cuts to the inside. He repasses Hannah. They collide. O'Mara looks back and he waved Hannah by. I don't understand this and I don't think that Hannah does either. But to the delight of this huge crowd, the hurricane has stormed to the lead. The Unadilla fans are the, you know, one in a, uh, one in a million. There's a... Uh, it used to be a few big races a year, Hangtown and uh, 
oh, mid-Ohio, Unadilla used to be all big. Now Unadilla is the biggest, and uh, the spectators are the wildest, and the spectators are 80% on my side, and I love it. I love coming here. I look forward to coming here all year long. And you can bet the Unadilla fans look forward to having Hannah come here. The Honda Star has developed a special relationship with Unadilla with only one thing missing, a win. And he's looking for that today. The first moto is winding down, and it's all Bob Hannah's. Meanwhile, in second, the Osho is back on the gas. If he had a problem that's apparently gone away, look at him, crest that uphill. Jojo Keller has worked his way to third place. This is Keller's first ride of the season on a 250. The Honda Privateer is making the most of it. Yellow-clad Brian Myerskoff, rider number 69, has worked through the pack and has caught the early leader, Rick Johnson. The two of them are fighting for the number four position. Myerskoff with an inside line. Can he hold it? Yes! Myerskoff goes to fourth. Just two years ago at Unadilla, Myerskoff hooked up with David Bailey and Dan Laporte in an unbelievable race. And this one with Johnson has the makings of another one. Myerskoff was 15th at the end of the first lap, but has steadily worked his way toward the front. Johnson, meanwhile, has worked his way toward the rear. He's not having a good day. He led the first day, and Johnson goes down. He slammed into the side of one of those vicious whoops. That uphill section is the roughest part of the track, and I'm sure that Johnson will attest to that. He's up on his bike and trying to get it started. There, it's running. Johnson drops the clutch, and he's back in the race. Rider number two, world points leader Jackie Vamont is having the kind of day that he wanted. He needs to stay close to Heinz Kinnegardner, number one, to protect his world championship standings lead. Kinnegardner, the defending world champion, has gone down a couple of times today, losing a lot of positions and points each time. But he's not giving up. In fact, he's caught Vamont and the Austrian is about to challenge the Frenchman. There he goes. Kinnegardner moved to the inside of Vamont and made the pass. At this point in the race, Vamone probably will not challenge Kenny Gardner. Vamone has a large points lead with only a couple of races left in the World Championship Series. He can well afford to give away a point or two. What he can't afford to do is give away huge blocks of points, or worse yet, come up with a DNF. Vamone is content staying in sight of his championship rival. The one lap board is out. Hannah, way out in front, needs only to keep it upright and running to claim the win in moto number one. Through the signal area, and Hannah's mechanic, Brian Lunas, hollers and holds up the signal board. I can't read it from here, but you can bet it, Brett. Be cool or think. Team Honda wants a one, two, three sweep in this one. The Hurricane is working his way to the low part of the track. Most of the action throughout this moto took place in the sections coming up. Hannah's battle with Bowen, the O'Mara pass, and the collision with O'Mara. I wonder if any of that is running through Hannah's mind, or if he's concentrating only on the matter at hand. Half a lap to go for the Hurricane, and moto number one will be in the books. Hannah, with an incredible ride, will have a leg up on winning the one race that has always eluded him and the one he wants more than any other. Hannah has a big lead, but he can't afford mistakes. He's got to keep his composure and concentration for a few more runs, whoops, jumps, and turn. The crowd is going nuts. Hannah heads for the finish line. There's the checkered flag, and Hannah wins moto number one of the Unadilla 250 U.S. Grand Prix. A sterling cut from behind victory that rocked the fans at Unadilla. The American contingent dominated first moto action. The first European, world champion Heinz Kindergartner, finished a strong sixth. Let's go to Tim Cotter. Right, we're in the pit area, and moto number one is just over. We're in the Honda pits, and Bob Hanna is our champion of uh, moto number one. Bob, how was it out there? Tough race, grueling race for me. Uh, I didn't get. I got about a tenth place start, I'd imagine, and uh, the track's got a lot of rocks on it, and I ate rocks for probably 35 of those 45 minutes. I probably ate rocks for 40 minutes. First, you had to get by Bone, and then Johnson. How'd you get by those fellows? Well, actually, I passed each of them. Tw I passed everybody twice. I think I passed. Uh, Johnny a couple times, they passed me back. I passed Bowen, he passed me back. I passed Johnson, he passed me back. So we did some passing out there, no doubt about that. Bob, we've talked to you earlier in the week, and you tell us that you just wanted to win two of them this year in Daytona, and you're on a good start here uh, for Unadilla. We hope you can keep it up, and uh, the fans are, are an inspiration for you here. Oh, no doubt about that. I heard them the whole time, right from the start. And uh, farther I got up, the louder they yelled. So I like that, no doubt about it. In the Honda Pits with Bob Hanna, we'll go back to Larry Myers. 
high temperatures affected the performance of some European riders. Lamone rode strong at the beginning of moto number one, but the heat took its toll and he faded to ninth. Americans, on the other hand, ignored the heat and concentrated on the race. Johnny O'Mara discusses his first moto performance and strategy for moto number two with Honda's five-time world champion, Roger DeCoster. Meanwhile, in the Yamaha pits, repairs are being made to the number 18 machine of Ricky Johnson. RJ was the victim of mechanical problems in moto number one. It was learned from the Yamaha camp that a small piece of plastic in the carburetor float bowl and fading suspension were the cause of Johnson's erratic performance. Cliff Lett, Johnson's mechanic, is working on those problems between motos. Now here's a group with no problems at all. They're part of the huge crowd that annually attends the U.S. Grand Prix at Unadilla. Or do they attend Unadilla and coincidentally see a Grand Prix? Whatever the reason, the Unadilla fans are legendary and they grow in numbers every year. When the race is on, they line the track, whoop, cheer, and holler for every pass. But between motos, their attention is drawn to other amusements. This group has invented a game called Dodge the Rolling Trash Barrel. To avoid being hit, the safest place is, you guessed it, in the barrel. But before all the good times and raucous behavior, you first have to get there. And getting there is half the fun. Cars, trucks, campers, and even motorcycles bring the fanatic fans to Unadilla. They arrive before dawn, they leave after dusk, and they expect more from Unadilla than just the race. For them, it's a happening. They come prepared for whatever Unadilla may offer. Prepared, for example, to wait in a five-mile-long line of traffic for the gates to open. The wait in line is not an inconvenience. Believe it or not, it's tradition. To the fanatic fans, it's the kickoff of the Unadilla weekend. A weekend of rock and roll, good times, and the best motocross on the best track in the U.S. To motocross fans, Unadilla is the Indy 500, the World Series, the Super Bowl, and America's Cup all rolled into one event. It's talked about all year by those that attend and dreamed about by those that do not. Quite simply, to the fanatic Unadilla fans, a motocross season is no season at all without Unadilla. Under darkening skies, the fans are set for moto number two of the U.S. 250 Grand Prix. The riders have moved from the staging area to the starting gate. As the second moto is about to get underway, all eyes are focused on Hannah, O'Mara, and Keller. The Honda Moto Trio finished one, two, three in moto number one. Larry, I'm on the starting line, and it's starting to sprinkle a little bit, and if the weather keeps coming, this might be a great advantage to Bob Hanna, who is known to be a mud rider, and going after his first championship at the U.S. Grand Prix here in Unadilla. As you can tell, the riders are up, and how they occur number one. It looks like the Osho. No, for the second time today, Honda privateer Tom Carson has stolen the limelight. O'Mara looked like he had it, but Carson from out of nowhere streaked to the head of the pack and leads O'Mara in second. Jojo Keller is third, Brian Myerskoff fourth, with Yannick Curvella from France running fifth. As the riders sort themselves out at the start of moto number two, O'Mara is wasting no time. He's already working on Carson. They're heading on the top course of the track toward Gravity Cavity. O'Mara alongside into the cavity and takes over first. The Osho out of the cavity. And look at the air that these riders are getting. It's a blind jump. You've got to have a lot of faith in your fellow riders. Hannah, winner of moto number one, looking for his first ever Unadilla win, had a bad start and is running toward the back of the pack. Out in front, it's still O'Mara, followed by Carson and Jojo Keller. Keller, number 55, put in a strong ride in moto number one to take third, while your leader, Johnny O'Mara, finished second. Brian Myerskoff, number 69 on the Suzuki, is running fourth in the early going. Now, Keller draws alongside Tom Carson, and Keller moves into the number two position. We've just received word that Hannah has fallen somewhere on the bottom part of the course. Hannah collided with Jackie Vimone. Both riders are up. They're running, but they're at the tail end of the pack. The Osho, Johnny O'Mara, is still your leader. He's been on the gas since the gate drop, but he can't seem to shake number 55, the Honda privateer from Plymouth, Massachusetts, Jojo Keller. In third, another Honda privateer, Tom Carson, is being challenged by Brian Myerskoff. Myerskoff has been able to draw even with Carson, but every time he does, Carson gets on the gas and pulls away. But Myerskoff will not give up. He's dogging every move that Carson makes. The fight is for third place, and what a show these riders are putting on. Side by side as they crest the hill. The rest of the charging pack behind them. It's Unadilla racing at its best. O'Mara still in the lead with very little breathing room from Jojo Keller in second. 
O'Mara's 1985 season is not what he expected it to be. He won the opening Supercross event in California, and that's just about it. No titles for O'Mara in 1985. Two years ago, the Osho was on top of the U.S. motocross scene. He won the 125cc national crown and followed that with a Supercross championship. O'Mara appeared to be on his way to U.S. dominance of motocross, but the brakes thus far in 1985 have not gone O'Mara's way. In third and fourth, a battle royal between Mark Barnett and Brian Myerskoff. Brian, with an inside line, will hold on to third place. And here comes Hannah, and he's on the gas. At the end of lap one, he was dead last. He's using every inch of the track to make up time. While Hannah works through traffic, your leader, Johnny O'Mara, has clear sailing ahead, and he's taking advantage of it. With no dust and no riders to pass, O'Mara has started to open a big lead on the rest of the field. He's pushing for a Unadilla win to go with the two 125 Grand Prix wins he already has. If he keeps it upright, the title is in the bag. Heinz Kindergartner leads a pack of riders through Gravity Cavity. He was the top European in moto number one with a sixth place and is currently running seventh. We're watching for Hannah. Since his spill, he's really moved through the pack. And there he is. Hannah takes an outside line and passes a couple more. The leaders going into that rough uphill section look like this. Out in front, it's number 33, the Osho on a Honda. Running in a number two position, also on a Honda, number 55, Jojo Keller. In third, it's the Kawasaki of Mark Barnett. Then in fourth place, it's the yellow clad, number 69, flying Brian Myerskopf on a Suzuki. Myerskopf is a former minibike national champion from Cala Mesa, California. He's put together some good rides on this Unadilla track, and he's having another one today. Meanwhile, the Hurricane, well back in the pack, is riding without a clutch. The lever was broken in that first lap crash from Bavone. But even with no clutch, Hannah continues to knife through traffic. The luck today, though, not on Hannah's side. We've had a couple nationals here and a Trans Ams and, uh, and GPs, and I've never won any of them, I don't believe. I've always had a problem in one motor, so I've always had, you know, any little problems. I fell off my share at times, and... Uh, had small problems, just never put one together here. I don't know why. So the Hannah Jinx continues, and Hannah continues to pound the track. He's won more national titles than any rider in history, but he can't win at Unadilla. There's Hannah's tuner, Brian Lunas, and the look on his face says it all. Look at his left rear pocket, and you'll see a new clutch lever. I don't believe, however, Hannah will stop for repairs. Instead, he'll continue to pick off as many riders as he can. The times he is turning are just as fast as the leaders. If he got a break or two, well, who knows? He's done some incredible things on racetracks. Just one lap ago, he was in last place. He has now passed 10 riders. Number two, Vimone, has kept pace and is only three places behind Hannah. At the front of the pack, the Osho continues to set the pace. Since taking the lead in the first lap, O'Mara has not been headed. In second, it's still Jojo Keller. According to the signboard, Keller has a four-second lead over Mark the Bomber Barnett. In 1984, Barnett won the first moto with a come-from-behind ride. In the second moto, Barnett was leading when he broke his brake anchor rod. It cost him the overall win. Behind Barnett, running in the number four position is Keith Bowen. Bowen was one of the hard luck riders in moto number one. And get this, Bob Hanna has worked up to eight. After crashing in the first lap and starting out in last place, Hannah has reeled in all but the first seven places and he's done it without a clutch and he's not done yet. Hannah has been quoted this year as saying he's close to retirement. From the way he's riding today, I'd have to say that retirement is the furthest thing from Hannah's mind. Watch him when he goes through a corner or down the straight. He picks lines as good as any rider in the world, and if the situation calls for it, he switches lines as good as anyone in the world. Hannah Bobbles! Look at that save by Hannah! I don't know how he did it! And look at the battle between Jojo Keller, the Honda privateer from Plymouth, Massachusetts, and Mark the Bomber Barnett, the Kawasaki factory rider from Bridgeview, Illinois. Keller is trying to do what no other privateer ever has, win the Unadilla 250 Grand Prix. If O'Mara drops off the pace and Keller is able to maintain his position, then Keller would be the overall winner. Those thoughts have to be in the back of the Honda rider's mind. But you can bet he's concentrating 100% on the immediate problem. That's staying ahead of Mark Barnett.
Now here comes O'Mara. He's led since the opening lap and barring unforeseen problems, he'll win the 250 Grand Prix. Then comes the battle for second between Jojo Keller and Mark Barnett. Yamaha's Keith Bowen, number 24, holds down the number four position. In fifth, it's the Suzuki of Brian Myerskoff, number 69. Up front, the action between Keller and Barnett has not slacked off a bit. Keller worked hard to get into the number two position, and he'll do whatever it takes to stay there. Around the sweeper, both riders driving hard and looking for traction. Keller drives to the outside of the corner while Barnett goes high and wide. They're headed down toward the finish line area. Barnett alongside Keller. The two riders side by side. Barnett makes the pass and moves into the number two position. Brian Myerskoff has pulled into the mechanics area for repairs. What a shame. Just moments ago he was fifth and he returns to the track in 20th. Another example of how quick fortunes are changed at Unadilla. Rider skill is only half the story. The other half is machine dependability. Meanwhile, out in front with a machine that's handled every quirk of this Unadilla track is the Osho. He's well on his way to his third career Grand Prix win. Two 125s and this one, the Unadilla 250. Prior to the start of today's race, O'Mara was not happy with his performance. He thought that during the practice sessions he was riding ragged. He had no idea why. Whatever the reason, he's got it together now. Behind O'Mara, working his way through lap riders is Mark Barnett from Bridgeview, Illinois. Keller is still running third, and Rick Johnson has moved to fourth. Keith Bowen is out of the race with his second DNF of the day. Johnson's first moto problems have apparently been solved as he and his Yamaha are putting together a strong ride. And look who's in fifth. Bob Hanna, his story today is nothing short of incredible. A come from behind win in moto number one, a crash with series point leader Jackie Vimone in the first lap of moto number two that put him in last place, and from last place, an incredible drive through the pack that has brought him to fifth, and he's done it with no clutch. Hanna has never won at Unadilla, but not because he hasn't tried. In sixth is the top European and defending world champion from Austria, Heinz Kinnegardner. Kinnegardner, currently in second place in the standings, will pick up a bunch of points today as points leader Bamone has dropped out of the race. And here's the Osho, Team Honda's Johnny O'Mara. He sets his victory at Unadilla. With just two laps to go, he's settled into a smooth, well-rehearsed riding style that is fast enough to keep him in front, yet controlled enough to keep him up on two wheels. Concentration is the key at this point. Mark Barnett, on the other hand, is still charging. He's been in similar situations countless times and knows the race isn't over until a checkered flag comes out. I'm certain Barnett is remembering Unadilla just one year ago, where all he had to do was coast home and victory was his. But it didn't work that way, as a mechanical problem knocked him out of the wind. If lightning strikes the leader two years in a row, Barnett wants to be ready. For the past two years, the crowd favorite among local riders and easily the top privateer has been this man from Plymouth, Massachusetts, number 55, New England's own Jojo Keller. All day long, Keller and his Honda have hounded the leaders, but apparently the tide has turned. Now it's his turn to be hounded. This rider, number 18, Rick Johnson, is closing in on Keller. And here they come. Johnson following Keller's line down the hill. Keller goes wide and Johnson cuts to the inside. Keller made a big mistake and Johnson makes the pass. The inside line that Johnson took is not nearly as rough as the line Keller took. Apparently JoJo went into the corner too fast. In any event, Rick Johnson, number 18, has taken over the number three position. Keller, the privateer, still with a fantastic ride, is dropped to fourth. No matter the outcome, JoJo Keller is a winner with Unadilla fans. Here's the Osho, Johnny O'Mara. When he crosses the finish line, this time around, the starter will hold up a board with the number one on it. That means just one lap to go. O'Mara, through the corner, driving toward the finish line. He pulls a wheelie as he passes the starter. One lap in the 1985 Unadilla Grand Prix is his. O'Mara's mechanic, Jim Felt, is telling O'Mara to concentrate, don't blow it. And you can bet that's exactly what O'Mara intends to do. He'll pick his line as carefully as he can to make sure the front wheel and the rear wheel stay in the same rut. He'll avoid lap riders and take it easy going in and out of corners. The key is concentration. O'Mara, the winner of Grand Prix in both the U.S. and in Europe. You've got to wonder if he could adapt to Europe and become a candidate for a world title.
Well, I think I do real well. Um, I've always adapted well to European tracks and, uh, you know, the climate and all that. Um, I think I'd be right in there for the championship. There's no doubt he's in there for a championship today. For eight years, the best in the world have tested their skill and stamina on this most demanding of motocross tracks. Unadilla has come to represent the ultimate in Grand Prix competition. A win here not only establishes you as a world-class rider, but earns you the respect of your peers as well. No one here today deserves those accolades more than Team Honda's Johnny O'Mara, winner of the U.S. 250 Unadilla Grand Prix. O'Mara's win marks the third consecutive sweep for American riders and the third in a row for Honda. There go the goggles. Roger DeCoster congratulates O'Mara as the Unadilla fans show their appreciation for the American win. There's Mark Barnett. He'll finish third overall. Let's go to Tim Cotter. We're down at trackside with Johnny O'Mara, our champion of the Unadilla 250 Grand Prix. Johnny, you were a little bit upset after moto number one. You wouldn't speak to us, but this is a different story. Yeah, well, you know, the reason why I didn't speak to you because, uh, you know, I wanted to come back and put a good effort in, and, you know, the second moto, and I didn't want to break my concentration at all. I knew I had the speed today, and I just had a little break that first moto, and I came back perfect. wanted to get the whole shot like I did, and uh, built up a little lead, and just, uh, I really felt good. It feels so good right now to win this thing. Whew. This Unadilla racetrack was good to you today, and how about the fans here at Unadilla? Oh, they're great. You know, I, you know, I know they're behind Bob a lot here and stuff, but... You know, they want to see an American win, and uh, they were really cheering me on there at the end, and I'd really like to thank them all for that. It really makes me feel good. Johnny, is this sort of like a dream come true for you? Oh, yeah. You know, I came into this race wanting to win it really bad. You know, I've won a couple 125 GPs, and I'm sure wanted to win a 250 GP, and uh, I'd like to go on and try to win a 500 now, and then I can say at least I won a GP in each class. So it feels really good, man. I can't tell you. Well, congratulations goes out to Team Honda rider Johnny O'Mara and the Johnny O Show. Larry, we'll go back up to you and let you take it from there. A tremendous win for the O Show, Johnny O'Mara, and the third straight for American riders and Team Honda. Final results, O'Mara with a second and first takes the overall title. Bob Hanna with a first and fifth takes second overall. Third place with a 5-2 tally was Mark Barnett. Privateer Jojo Keller put in an excellent ride. His third and fourth gave him fourth overall. And Ricky Johnson with a seventh and third rounds out the top five. For the Osho and Team Honda, the weekend could not have been better. From the Unadilla Valley Sports Center in New Berlin, New York, and the eighth running of the U.S. 250 Grand Prix. For Tim Cotter, I'm Larry Myers. So long until next year.